Hi all, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna see that what's the difference between the for each loop and the parallel dot for each loop and when to use what. I've come up this video on demand because uh, I have seen that a lot of people face this problem, face this issue on selecting between the two and on how to use especially the parallel dot for each. So the for each loop iteration takes place sequentially so it is comparatively slower but then that totally depends on your use case if you use parallel dot for each in a use case in which it is not required then even that parallel dot for each could even slow your, slower your task so it totally depends on the scenario on the use case and it takes place from a single thread and this takes place from a multiple thread so if you have three tasks and they're not dependent on each other then they the three tasks can run simultaneously so that is definitely going to save your time in for each loop because task two is dependent on task one. So the task two cannot start until task one is completed. So that's why it takes a little more time because they run serially and they run parallelly. So let's go to the demo and see the how to use. So first, if we talk about parallel for each. So I am going to drag an activity which is parallel dot for each and uh, I'll take a an assign and in this assign I'll read a file all the files from a particular folder so this is array of strings files a r r and to get all the files from a particular folder all you need to write is directory So we'll have to write directory dot get file and you'll have to write in double quotes the file path. So here's the file path. So from this particular folder, all the files will be extracted and stored in an array of strings. Now you'll iterate over all these files. You will pass for each item in files AR. Do not forget to change the type argument from here. So because this is an array of strings, so you read on string. So you have to make this type argument as string. And once you make it string, the error is done. Now what you're going to do is uh, we'll drag a message box just to show that how it works because it doesn't work sequentially. So over here, if we write in item name and uh, then what we can do is we'll take a counter, increment it and then we can display that counter value this is just to showcase you that it doesn't work sequentially it won't go line by line as the usual for each loop the traditional for each loop works this doesn't work that way so we'll drag in one more message box to display this counter now because this counter is an integer you'll have to convert it to string to display it in the message box and I've set the default value to zero. So I'll increment it over here. See, it's the default value is zero and the files ARR is an array of strings. Now, if I execute this, so it's not necessary that I'll get the message box for the file name, then I'll get the message box for counter. It is asynchronously. It will not wait for the other task to complete. If it's not dependent, it'll keep on moving ahead. It's like, uh, I'll tell you an example of a use case. For example, if you ping three websites and you will get then response from those three websites. So you have pinged like first you've pinged Google, then you've pinged Yahoo, then you've pinged Twitter, but the Twitter from the Twitter website, you get the response first. So that response would be printed first. So the calling, the ping does not depend on how the sequence of ping does not depend. As the response comes for a particular site, it would be printed. So it won't be printed like first, always Google would be printed, then always Yahoo would be printed. So you got this first file name, you'll click on OK. You got this counter value, then the second file name then the counter value, then the third file name, then the counter value, then the fourth file name, and then the counter value. Now you must be wondering that it has all happened sequentially, but it's not the case. 
because uh, this displaying does not take any time so it went sequentially but if i add in a delay of you say just two seconds or three seconds then it won't go in the same way just because there was no delay and the displaying does not take any time so you you must have seen that it worked like a normal traditional for each loop but that's not the case now i'll click on debug and or i click on run because debug takes a lot more time so you got the first file name then you got the second file name now you see it didn't go to display the counter then you got the third file name then you got the fourth file name and then you get the counter because of three seconds it had to wait it did not wait for the this delay to complete instead the parallel for each utilized this delay to complete all the task above this delay and then move on to the next next task so the use case could be suppose you're downloading a file from a browser and the download takes because the file size the download takes 10 minutes or 15 minutes to download so once you've started the download you need not wait for the download to complete in that time the bot could do other work instead of waiting for that 15 minutes to complete the download and then move to the other task so instead of waiting the bot could do other tasks like entering entry of the data into some excel or scraping something else or anything what whichever is required in the use case so that is where you can use this parallel dot for each activity wherever the sequence does not matter and you do not have to wait for a particular activity to complete you could use this if we talk about for each then it's the normal for loop so it would always takes place sequentially there would no there would be no change as the data or the activity has been written it would take place in the same way if there is a delay then it will wait it will wait for three seconds before moving on to the next activity so that's the drawback if i put in this thing here and i you know, comment this to comment a call, the shortcut is Control D. That is Control D is for disable, and Control E is to enable. That is to remove the comment. Now, if I run this, this whole thing would take place sequentially. So you got the first file name, then you'll have a delay of three seconds before getting the counter, then the second file name, then again a delay of three seconds, and then the second file name. So I'll stop it here because it will take a delay of three seconds in displaying every file name. That's how the for each activity works. So it's used whenever the sequence of an activity matters. To check in the time, whether the for each loop how much time does it take and parallel dot for each how much time does it take i've written this code here we'll execute this to see how much time does it take i'll just walk you through the code so over here i've declared a string array of string whose name is colors this dim color is just a variable whose data type is string this sw is of the time system dot diagnostics dot stopwatch so it would act as a stopwatch this is the initialization of the array which has been created here now this is traditional for each loop we have started the time watch start stopwatch which is from 000, like from the start time and now we have looped in in this array and what's the loop the loop is for each the thread ID would always be the same because it is a single thread working in for each. So uh, this is string dot format. I'll explain it in the next video how to use this. So this zero would take place of color. Then you will get thread ID. And in, in this one where it's written curly braces one in this, the value would be this thread dot current thread dot managed thread ID. So this is how string dot format works then total time would be your 
how s w dot elapsed or total seconds that is how much time has been elapsed on the stopwatch then we'll execute a for each loop parallel dot for each we'll again start the stopwatch from the initial time that is 0 minutes 0 seconds 0 hours and then we'll again iterate over the colors array and again we'll print in the color what color we are iterating to what is the thread id and then thread dot save and then the total time executed in parallel dot for each and we'll just run this and we'll see the output in the output panel to see how much time both for each and parallel dot for each has taken so we see here that the traditional for each has it's been sequential one two three four and the thread id is same always because it works in the single thread and if we see the parallel to for each activity then it's one then it's four and the thread ids are also all different because it works on multiple thread and the time for this is 0 0.05 seconds and for this is 0 0.10 seconds so that's what's the difference between the for each loop and the traditional for each loop so that's all for the video don't forget to press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates and please subscribe the channel for more good contents coming in thank you